Hello, here I'm going to show you how to find the uh, VO2 max for someone from the YMCA submaximal bike test uh, using the heart rate and workload data. So first we need to enter a few things. So I'm going to enter weight first, so 56.4 kilos for this person. This person is also 21 years old. Um, we're going to do uh, their heart rate max right here equals to 220 minus their age. It's unknown, so we have to do 220 minus their age, and then their 85% was equals to this times 0.85 gets us their 85% of heart rate max. Um, so there is at least two measured heart rates for each person, uh, each, sta uh, each stage. Um, so you're free to enter either of those. Doesn't matter. Should not cause such an issue. Um, I generally go with the last recorded one though, the minute three, or if you extend the stage, minute four. So for this person, uh, they were at 70 at 150 beats per, at 150 kilogram meters per minute. And then they, since they were in this heart rate range, they then went to this workload. And then we're at 130, and then 150, and then stopped at 170. So they're just right at their 85%. That's OK. All right, then we need to calculate a slope and an intercept from these. So equals to slope, so our known y's and our known x's. Okay, we got a slope there. And then we'll calculate our intercept. Intercept. So known y's and known x's. All right. Then we need to figure out what, given this person's max heart rate, estimated of course, their maximal workload based off this. So we're going to work a little bit backwards. We're going to take this number minus the intercept and then divide it by the slope. So this is from y equals mx plus b to x equals y minus b divided by uh, m. So m being the slope, b meaning the intercept. So workload max heart rate heart rate max. And then finally we need to calculate the VO2 max. So we'll equal type equals to 1.8 times that workload multiply uh, sorry multiply by that workload divided by their body weight and then plus 7. All right, so 49.89, not too shabby, if I may say so. Um, so that's how you calculate the VO2 max. And lastly, I want to show you how to do the, uh, to get a graph of this type of stuff. So we're going to highlight all of that. And then we're going to insert, sorry, not insert there. I'm going to come to the top and do an insert. I know it's not in frame. But you want to go to the Insert tab and then do a scatter plot. All right, so this is not very, very interesting right now. That's OK. But we can name it something like heart rate to workload relationship. And we can spruce it up by changing some of the layout. 
Um, we can add a trend line in. So these were our four points here, and this was our estimated line point right out here. And then let's, I like changing the legend to the bottom so that we have more area around here. And then you can also add a uh, data label above that will show what the heart rate was of each of these. Uh, we can also add axes. Sorry, not axes. We can add axis titles. So, workload, and that's in kilogram meters per minute. And then we can also do the same uh, for the vertical axis. You can choose whichever you'd like. Uh, to save space, I like these two, not so much this one. So a vertical, and we'll go with heart rate, BPM. Eh, I want to save some space on this one. Let's go with rotated. Rotated looks good. Much, much cleaner. All right, so um, that's about it for how to create a graph and then also get the VO2 max for this type of data. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email your instructor or myself. Thank you.